If you look at the stability of relationships over time, something that's been extensively studied mainly by psychologists, but now also by neurobiologists, what you find is that there are some key features of interactions between individuals that predict that a relationship will last. And those are many, but mainly fall under this category of positive delusions. I'll return to those and what those exactly look like. But there are also just a handful of things that predict that a relationship will fail over time. The four horsemen of relationships, these are things that um, essentially almost always predict that a couple will break up. And I think the current number on this is that Gottman can predict divorce with 94% accuracy, which if you think about it is pretty remarkable. So even though um, these are purely psychological studies, um, I'm not aware of any uh, analyses of underlying physiology, there are some things that they can observe between couples that can lead them to predict whether or not a couple will stay together or break up with 94% accuracy. So what are those things? Those four behaviors, what they call the four horsemen of the apocalypse (laughs) uh, for relationships, um, are one, criticism, two, defensiveness, three, stonewalling, and four, contempt, with contempt being um, the most powerful predictor of uh, breaking up. Um, Criticism, of course, does not mean that there's uh, no place for criticism in stable relationships. Of course, there is. It has to do with how frequent and how intensely that criticism is voiced. Defensiveness, of course, is defensiveness. Uh, We know as the sort of lack of ability to hear another or to adopt their stance. So lack of empathy, I think, is is a Uh, one way to interpret defensiveness. Stonewalling, which is actually another form of lack of empathy. It's a turning off of this neural circuit that's so critical for um, desire, love, and attachment. The stonewalling essentially means uh, the emotional response or the request of another is completely cut off. So it's, it's, uh, I don't think there's been brain imaging of this, but we, I think we can reasonably imagine that it involves um, untethering your insula response from the other and what they're dealing with and focusing your insular response, (laughs) um, no pun intended, on your own internal state or perhaps the state of uh, someone else entirely. Talk about infidelity in a moment. And then contempt. And contempt has actually been referred to as the sulfuric acid of relationship. Uh, I didn't say that, but Gottman and colleagues have, that it is uh, such a powerful predictor of divorce and breakups uh, in the future. And contempt, of course, uh, by definition, is the feeling that a person or thing is beneath consideration, worthlessness, or deserving scorn. And apparently they can identify this in the videos of uh, couples having discussions and interacting by um, very elaborate eye rolls, by expressions of anger in one individual when their partner is actually expressing enthusiasm or excitement about something. It's the, uh, oh yeah, you would say that, or... um, or deep-seated resentment toward the other, so much so that it's apparent that one kind of actively dislikes the other partner. Um, So contempt, uh, disregard for something that should be taken into account is the other way to think about it, that runs counter to all of the neural circuits, all three of the neural circuits that we talked about before. It certainly is, um, is the antithesis of empathy. It is anything but a positive delusion. It's really looking at the other individual, either accurately or inaccurately, as somebody that you kind of despise. And then it is an absolute inversion of the autonomic seesaw matching that I was talking about before. It's a dissociating of your seesaw from their seesaw. They're very excited about something. You're unexcited by it. In fact, it's an inversion of their seesaw where they're excited, you're down. Um, They're down, you're up. Okay, so it's a, it's a basically a an inversion of all of the neural circuits that Helen Fisher and others have identified as critical for desire, love, and attachment, and therefore it's not um, surprising that it is so strongly predictive of breakups, and in the case of married couples, of divorce. <laughs> 